But what I was saying earlier, though, I wasn't. Uh, I'm not kidding. I was. I was not messing with you. About the birthday thing. The birthday. Yeah, I'm, I don't know where you got that. I'm straight tripping. I thought it's your mom's birthday <laughs> was on the trailer. I even found because I have a nephew who has that birthday, and I was like, oh, hope Joel's mom's having a great birthday. She's not. <laughs> She's not. She's having a terrible birthday. Um. Hey. Hi. We've been hanging out all day today. Yeah. It's nice because you're gonna be leaving pretty soon. It's uh. Yeah. <laughs> Sad. But no reason to get upset about that right now, because it's the holidays. Hey, I'm like, maybe we could do that too. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of I Didn't See It But I Believe You. I'm Doug. I'm Joel. And this is episode 77. Eight. Uh, yeah, so again, happy holidays. Uh, this is officially our actual Christmas episode, but there's a lot of other holidays out there to be celebrated, like Kwanzaa. Hanukkah and all other things. What do you feel? It... 78. 78. Episode 78. So, um, I, do you, what do you feel about when someone you're like, happy holidays and somebody's like, Merry Christmas. I've never had that happen. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Is that real? Yes. That's... It's, a, it's a thing in, in small town Texas, like Christian forward communities. And uh, it is always just the most. Ugh. It's, it's like it's like not everybody is Christian. Sure, and, and, and I mean, and, I mean, even though there's a <laughs> lot of Christian people who celebrate non-Christian people who celebrate Christmas, they just take the religious aspect out of it. But that being said, fuck that. Yeah, there's a really cute. Uh, well, yeah, there's a really cute. Um, like, why is your fucking holiday better than everybody else's fucking holiday? I, 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 I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I love God. And the Lord was born, and you know, and they put him in the manger. There wasn't any room at the inn, and his homies came and said, "Here, we got some gifts for you: frankincense and myrrh, and some gold." <laughs> and Mary and Joseph were like, "We're in this, we're in this barn with these animals. They had goats and donkeys, and they saw the star. And the wise men, they followed the star, and then Jesus was born. But what about the Jews? You know, they yeah. they're not involved in that. I feel like that. that well, they are. All I mean, Jews. no, no, no. What I mean though is like, and what about Hanukkah? And Kwanzaa and fucking I don't know how, I don't know if this is actually a holiday, but Boxing Day. Why are those not as important? So our Canadians would definitely know the answer to that. I think it comes back from the old days that all the help and the peasants in the and everybody that worked for the rich people didn't get to open their presents till the next day, and they all had like one present, and they just called it Boxing Day. Yeah, I could be. I, very I thought wrong it was. About I that. thought it was because you throw out the boxes from Christmas Day. I don't think so. I don't Shit. think that's a very. I don't think that's well. And also, I want to be clear. I brought up the Jew thing because that, <laughs> because that period of time, like in that, that that period of time and that that place on Earth, I mo see. mostly Jewish traditions survived from there. So it's weird to me that the one thing that didn't survive from there for like the, I mean, I, I know Jew Jewish people still celebrate Hanukkah, obviously, but I mean, it's weird to me that Hanukkah didn't become the prevailing holiday. Christmas Day. Why would uh, you're talking about because of, of strictly population? Yeah, and, population and, and time strength and numbers. And, yeah, and just the way like the way things get passed down over time. Like, at what point did the birth of Jesus? Hanukkah's still a big a deal. No, I know, but I'm saying, at what point did the birth of Jesus as like a Messiah figure become the predominant? I don't know, George. Have you ever heard of a little thing called the Spanish Inquisition? You ever heard of Manifest Destiny? It's like, God, there's a lot of reasons why that's the way it is. Yeah. So, but my brain fart earlier, as you mentioned, a lot of people celebrate Christmas, even people that don't celebrate Christianity. Or like follow. China. They love Christmas over there, and they they are super not Christian. I China? It's China, right? That celebrates with KFC on Christmas. That's Japan. I'm sorry, Japan. Uh, but they, Japan the, has a very high Christian population. Really? Yeah. That I thought Buddhism. that I thought that Japan was predominantly non-religious. No, they have a high Christian uh, percentage for sure. Is China predominantly non-religious? China does not like any religion, right? No, I mean, I don't know if they have a. They don't, because look what they're doing to the Uyghur Muslims or the Uyghur. Or how yeah, you say well, it? I mean, I, I would imagine, I don't know, but I know, I know that I have a cousin who is half Chinese and he's a priest, half Irish, half Chinese, pretty wild. My cousin Greg, and he 
had to like pretty he, to spread the word of the gospel. To get like he had to sneak into uh, China at, in, not as a priest, but as a fellow Chinese person or whatever. And that's how like he got in. And they found out he was a priest. He was like they could have they they would have lit him up. Uh, I I I want to make sure that I, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the story I was told by my family. Okay, I want to make sure I was right about this. I could just ask him. Scorsese put a movie out. Like four years ago, that nobody really paid attention to because it doesn't have any kind of like. But it's called Silence, and it's about two Portuguese missionaries and who travel uh, to Japan to spread Christianity. And it's uh, it's that was Scorsese. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. He directed it. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's uh, it has um, Spider Man and um, and Kylo Ren. Yeah, yeah, they're both in it. It's really fucking good. Never but seen it, but I didn't it's know it. Incredibly, it's incredibly interesting because. It looks at this idea of, like, you know, the missionary, Andrew Garfield's character, has to eventually come to terms with the fact that, like, the way they're reacting to his Christianity is the way he feels about their rituals and, yeah. and rites and stuff like that. And it, it, Scorsese does a really good job of not hating faith but putting the right blame on the right place. It's a really interesting idea. I mean, Scorsese's always been uh, controversial in thought with that, but I mean... Oh yeah, Last Temptation. I Last totally temptation forgot of Christ. about which, it, which isn't actually that bad. It just got way blown out of proportion. When I sat down to watch it the first time, it I was ends, nervous. It ends, the, it ends the way the book ends. Right. I think the problem, though, right, is that he gives in to Temptation, and that's why they fucking... No, it shows what would happen if he did, because don't remember... Remember, it, he flashes yeah. back to him on with the cross. With Mary Magdalene. Oh, but he's... It, Oh no, that's right. It finished he, out with him marrying yeah, her. Yeah, he gets her pregnant. That's right. Yeah, which is remember when he's like when he's like watching her getting railed by all that all those dudes. And he's just like there. He's like and they're and they're like like and he's like no no, no you can go. <laughs> you remember that scene? Kind of. Fuck that up. Uh, it's interesting though because that's like a lot of the fucking satanic panic was happening at the same time. Uh -huh. So you can see why the reaction was that way. But if that movie came out now, when did that movie come out? Eighty four. I think Santana Panic was more towards the nineties, Julie. It, mid mid eighties to, to early nineties. If that movie came out now, I don't think it would be a big deal at all. No, if it now. came out now, it would be critically la lauded and people would love it. It would win a million oh, awards yeah, and it would yeah. be con it would be considered this because I mean and look, this is not to say that there's not reasons for this or rights for this, but it is pretty it's not frowned upon to to uh, dissect Christianity like it was in the eighties. <laughs> Hey man, I'm I I am not Grinching this year. I'm not I'm not Scrooge McDuck this year. So I'm gonna let this one. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna take oh, the yeah. higher road on this. Uh, but I applaud that. Yeah, totally. Every everything should be open to scrutiny. Everything should be open to scrutiny for sure. That's yeah. why. That's why I get so okay. Like I know this is going off on a tangent, but I just it's in my brain, so I want to bring it up. I know it, it just with like Islam mm -hmm. and. The way people talk about and react to people talking about Islam, I get really confused because a lot of what the worst, a lot of what people consider the worst parts of Christianity are just as prevalent, if not more prevalent, yeah, in Islam. But, but you 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 can't you you can't really criticize Islam the way you can criticize Christianity. And I get, I get the reasons why, like, perse the persecution for them has been way worse and shit like that. It's just interesting to me that now, these days, it's ended up that way. Yeah. Uh, so, that was in one ear out the other. Uh, I'm sure that was a beautiful... No, no, it was a straight-up tangent. It meant nothing. Okay, cool. The only reason I said that because we were talking about a few things. It's something I had a brain fart on earlier, but I watched a really cute documentary series on Netflix. Is it a documentary series? Yeah. It's, uh, like, the... They, you know, they do it with the video games, and they do it with... Uh, the toys that we forgot. The toys that made us. The toys that made us, yeah. The movies that made us, they just like... Yeah, yeah, we watched a couple of those. And it's, it's, it's not... It, you can tell they didn't have big of a budget as they did for the other ones, but they did it about Elf. The creator of Elf is born and raised Jewish, but just always loved the Christmas holiday. Is the creator of Elf John Favreau? No, he's the director of Elf. Who created it? This... The dude I'm talking about. He's a, yeah, born and raised Jewish, and his family always loved Christmas. It's just like he just lumped it into their celebration. And he just like and he is so full of love from the idea of Christmas that he like like yeah, just rewatch it, I guess. And it's like anyways, it's called the the story that made us or the, the, movies, the movies that made us and the one about elf. And yeah, so it's like a good example of Christian or Christianity. Muslim Jewish. What the fuck? Christmas. Christmas being like kind of adopted by all cultures in ways. Totally. And in Japan, 
It does have a high, uh, but the thing is, KFC is a big deal on Christmas, and they like take like a month out, take like orders and stuff. Yep. And, and, and that, if you don't get your order, and you're not getting it, you're not getting KFC. So KFC is definitely a Japanese thing in Japan though. for Christmas. I, I have a lot of Japanese friends here, and they 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 don't really talk. They're like, oh, that's not that's a thing over there. Probably they don't even know if it's they didn't. And when I brought it up, they, some of them were just like, I don't even. No. Yeah, yeah. So, but that, the internet sorry. says it's true. Well, there, the people that live there say it's true too. Like I've watched videos of where people. Do I haven't it been in Japan, dude. I was supposed to go past March, but all this happened, man. Crazy. One day, dude. And then uh, when you're talking about that, uh, we when I said I'm not Scrooge anymore, but you know what I did watch? Uh, Disney Plus has some really Disney Plus is bangers, dude. Dude, especially for Christmas movie, Home Alone, Home Alone Two. Obviously. They have all the Home Alones. They have all six of them. No, yeah, uh, <laughs> and then they have. Um, that's it. No, they have the uh, Scrooge McDuck, the 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 original, the the Christmas di- Carol with Scrooge with Scrooge, and that's that's the introduction of Scrooge McDuck. That's in Ducktales. Yeah, and I was like watching it, and it's so freaking funny because he's like this, <laughs> he's not English, he's Scottish as fuck, and he's like just like, <laughs> just this whole ball thing is like it's like Scrooge, he just like. I fucking hate Christmas. <laughs> it's like Christmas, ball. <laughs> like he says, it's like this crazy Scottish accent, and he's a duck, and it's like the most asinine retelling of a story. I don't know. It's just really fun to watch. So I'll just check that out. D plus is interesting. You see that uh, Mighty Ducks trailer? Uh uh-uh. uh So it's it gonna be a show? I don't know. I couldn't tell. It's called Mighty Ducks Game Changers. I'm gonna tell you what the plot is. Okay. I want your reaction. Okay. The plot of this movie is that a boy, our Charlie, I guess, uh, the new Charlie, because uh-huh. it's, it's a reboot of Mighty Ducks, uh, the main kid wants to play hockey, but fucking sucks. Okay. Okay, just like the beginning of Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Except in this movie, the Mighty Ducks exist and are the mean good team that's already good and won't let the bad kids play on their team. Gotcha. Okay? So they she, forgot the roots. Exactly. So she starts, the mom starts her own hockey league, and Emilio Estevez comes in as Coach Bombay to coach him. Emilio Estevez does? Yeah, he's the coach in it. But it's so, like, I was so not with it till they showed Emilio. They're either going to ruin that franchise or it's going to be awesome. I mean, those movies are awesome. They hold no, up really well. They're great. Ducks fly together, man. Fuck yeah, dude. When Cake the- eater. <laughs> My when, favorite insult. Can, uh, when the uh, when the uh, ducks, what do you say? When the cow, when the cows are roaming in a circle, the the buzzards are flying above them. Ducks fly together. <laughs> I love I love those fucking movies, man. I love all of them. Even the third one where they go to college is good. Kevin, you're, you're such, such a, a disease. disease. <laughs> you're what the French call les incompetents. Do what Buzz said. Just pack toilet paper and water. See, I don't remember him saying Buzz. I don't remember Buzz saying that. No, they. He says, "Buzz already told you. Pack toilet paper okay. and water." So it's like, what do you like? What do you call that? Like when you're like catching into a part of a dialogue that you should already know. That it implies that it's already happened. How do you not know that? You I right. just don't know what the word is. What the word for that was? I was gonna say alliteration, but I don't think that's what that is. So you know about uh, Buzz's girlfriend, yeah. Wolf. You know about that picture? Yeah, hundred percent. That's my one of my favorite trivia things of that movie. Say it, John Hughes got to that point in filming and had actually had a picture of a girl and he said he sat up all night looking at it and was like i can't do this to this girl so he got his nephew to take a picture for him and he put her he put him in the same outfit they had the girl in how wholesome is that it's fucking so wholesome dude that is literally like when i heard that it gave me like that good feeling inside like dang man like good for you not doing that because like i have a mixed i have mixed feelings about john hughes i think like he wrote some really good movies, but he also created some of the worst cliches that we still haven't been able to get rid of with teen movies. Like, uh, why would you why would you hold that against them? It's like pioneering. No, no, I know, but there are a lot of things that I just don't the cliches I don't like that don't work yeah. anymore. Like, like okay, now the nerd does get the girl. Yeah, the nerd is not the nerd anymore. But when but these these teen movies are all not, are all still built around the jock, the the outcast, the nerd. And I just don't... That's not what it's like anymore. I mean, I always thought that was great that Ducky didn't get the girl. Man, have you seen that movie recently? No, it was we, bad. Holy shit. That movie? Uh, that's 16 Candles. Yeah. Right? That one and... Uh, 
Revenge of the Nerds are... John, you said Revenge of the Nerds? No, I'm just... It's another movie from that time period that I've watched this year and it just went, oh, fuck, you can't... You, what are you doing? Stop, stop! Like, dude, Revenge of the Nerds ends with an R. Like, a actual R. A, an R, bro, and it's played for laughs. An R? Yeah, I'm not going to say the word because I'm pretty sure you get flagged for using that word, right? The, the violent act of sexual aggression. Oh. Yeah, that's in Revenge of the Nerds as a fucking hilarious climax to the movie. Dude, we haven't talked about R in so long that it's just like, an R? Yeah, yeah that movie, it, that's the climax of that movie. He sneaks up behind the girl. That's right! And R's her, and it's played for laughs. And fucking uh, 16 Candles, same shit. Jokes about that happening. Uh, that one guy that one guy leaves with the girl passed out in his car. He gives her to his friends. Oh, my Remember, God. Remember, he's like, he's like, get in. She's fucked up. and gets all his friends in the car. Ducky is straight up the most racist caricature of an Asian. And, like, dude, that... Holy those, shit. Those movies, you go back and watch them, and you go, Johnny, boy, what were you doing, man? Oh, wow. That's... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, dude, I haven't seen that movie in years, so <laughs> I don't. I don't really usually ever care about stuff like that because I mean, I, I think a lot of movies are products of their time. But you go back and watch those, and you go, guys, really? You still thought this was acceptable in the '90s and the late '80s, bro? So in Christmas, uh, another thing I want to tie into Christmas is like the traditions of Christmas. We kind of touch base on it or whatever, but like you know, and another reason I'm embracing this holiday is because I'm like, I was always so mad about everything that was adopted from the pagan. I mean, I'm not a pagan by any means, but like the whole entire pagan uh, rituals. You're a poser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heard that. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, like everything from the Christmas tree to Christmas lights to everything is like all like derives from something other than Christianity. And you were talking about Jesus' birthday earlier, and we we're talking about the, were we talking about the other day that um, I, I I heard that it was like closer to August if he was really. Born and you were saying like something like in July or something like that. We've talked about it. Does that before. mean you talking about we, that? We have talked about that before. It's like, but like, it's crazy because nobody can even agree. Nobody can agree on anything. Well, because the, well, the Gregorian calendar. Yeah. Like, that that wasn't even. No, it definitely. What I think the Gregorian calendar. I mean, uh, a pope made the Gregorian. I think Pope Gregory. But built around all the Christian ideas, right? And yeah. Where the it, Gregorian calendar came from. And it had something to do. And they, I think they. I think they like. Did like Seasons this. and religion. <laughs> well, I think they made it to where like they're like they they told the people it was uh, God's plan for agriculture or something like that. Since agriculture is coming on or whatever, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Like daytime saving time, day daylight savings times confuses the living hell out of me. Confuses the living hell out of everyone who doesn't live in America. I always thought that it was like uh, daylight it's savings. Shit. I always thought daylight savings time was um, for farming, but apparently it's about wartime. See, yeah. I, I I don't know, but I know we're the only country that does it, and I know that the states, Arizona doesn't. Yeah, I was about to say the states that don't do it. Arizona. Yeah, Arizona, but New Jersey. <laughs> there's know. a hand. There's a handful of states that don't do it. Arizona's definitely one, because I was in Arizona when time change was supposed to happen, and yeah. it fucked me up so bad. Yeah, yeah. But it's pointless. Also, other things that are pointless. We use the fucking metric system. No, we. Don't. I mean, I mean, we use the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we use the. Uh, like, no, imper- we, we use the imperial system. Yeah. Why? And there's like one other country like that does it too. It's so dumb because if you go and try to do anything that's not that's not starting in America, you yeah. have to fucking convert every. And Dude, for, that's for them so too, funny. they come to America and they're like. All our plugs are wrong. Our batteries are wrong. We fucking used the wrong numbers. Yeah. Time is and wrong. Everybody from like another country, any other country comes here and they're like, you do realize. You're the only one we're doing the only this. Only I mean, we are quite a giant mass. Yeah, no, you know, that's so, true. But at the same time, you bringing up metric system kind of freaking had me tripping because I just showed you earlier, Joel and I were watching a bunch of videos and stuff. I have been wormholed. Wormholed? Yeah. Rabbit hole. Rabbit hole, wormhole. Rabbit hole on. Mountaineering in the big 14, 18, me, 18, 8,000 meter mountains, which is, of I course, say 18 mount, meets. I, I can't remember all the names of them right now, but uh, of course, Mount Everest, uh, K2, you Annapura. Have the, you have the Helen climb. Uh, the, oh, the, the, the Helen stairs. You bastard. The Hillary step. The Hillary steps. The, 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 the Helen step. The Helen stairs. And the Hillary step has collapsed. The Helen stairs. And so, like, I remember, but do you remember when I was younger, I always, like, talk about, like, I have a bucket list, and, and when I was, like, 25, I'm, like, Everest for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of, and I was telling you earlier, it kind of fell off because it became a 
I never, you got to be extremely rich to have that hobby because that's all it is. It's a hobby. You're saying earlier, there's absolutely no reward except for yourself and people patting you on the back for doing it, which I don't have a problem with whatsoever. Like I would, if I had, but you need a lot of money to do it, a lot of time to do it. Uh, anyways, I was just telling, but okay. <laughs> so this, this simply, this, there's a reason I'm saying this. Like, uh, t -t -t -today, one of our freaking, dude, one of our listeners was telling me the other day, uh, that, he was talking about other podcasts. So it reminds me a lot of y'all, but uh, but it's much more put together. Oh, I hate go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. We do ramble pretty hard. That's the point. I know. This I, isn't the fucking news. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, dude, we got to talk about that, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, this, I mean, this will touch me. No, yeah, yeah, it's funny. So, anyways, I'm like, I'm, I'm like nerding out at work the other day. I'm like, yeah, dude, like these freaking... You know, if you get past the 8,000 meter, 8,000 foot mark, it's the death zone, and everybody's like, 8,000 foot? You can't. I'm like, yeah, because your body can't metabolize oxygen anymore, and it just starts to die. And like, 8,000 feet? I'm like, yeah, man, that crazy. Like, everybody I'm telling just kind of, they don't know what I'm talking, like, they never actually looked into it, so they're kind of concerned. <laughs> 8,000 feet? It's like, that's pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> it's 8,000 meters. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> and so I got my meters and feet mixed up, and I'm like, 8,000 8, meters is 21,000, or like right, or 20,000 feet around that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or it's less than that. It's, it's less than clouds. I'm, yeah, well, no, tw eight. Isn't clouds 30,000 feet? Or is that 18,000 feet? I can't remember. Planes, but, planes fly at 30,000, so 18,000 is the cloud, right? Yeah, yeah, because planes can't because the top of Everest planes don't even fly that high unless they're going over the, the thirty thousand feet is where planes fly. Oh my god, twenty thousand, twenty nine thousand, twenty nine feet is how high Mount Everest is. And planes fly at thirty thousand, so that's higher. Thirty thousand? Yeah, it's okay. that's why when you hear terror at thirty thousand feet and stuff like that, like so eight thousand meters. Now all I'm saying is, I, mean, I I swear this is I'm trying to say this because it. Everybody uses meters, and so when somebody says meters, I'm like, like, it's a couple, fucking, they're fucking thirty meters away. I'm like, hey, shit, it's like, I'm thinking thirty feet. Right, right, right. You know, right. so I'm like, and it's like, oh, it's three feet to a meter. I'm like, now I got fucked. Now I'm all fucked up. That's you know? nine, ninety feet. Because I grew up in South Texas, so I don't know what the fuck a meter is. Well, and then it's like, then, but you used like, to have those meter sticks, meter sticks and yard sticks. Are you watching? You know, like you watch those uh, videos online of uh, people getting all upset. With the whole mask and stuff or anything, anywhere other in America, she's like, this British lady, she's like, Oi, she's like, two meters between you and I. This is one meter. One more meter. <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm in my car. I'm in my fucking car. He's like, hey, hey, pont. <laughs> you daft cunt. You daft cunt. I'm in my car. And it's like, I'm like, but a meter. Oh, yeah, I always get confused with feet. That's it. Yeah, those feet. How does that get you all trampled? Speaking of feet, I mean, I mean I'm afraid you have nothing to say about that. I, I, I pretty much covered how I feel about it. <laughs> so, no, but Annapura is one of the most dangerous mountains to climb. and it's one. Of the, but the hardest mountain to climb... You ever been to Arpana Josebetu? <laughs> what? Arpana Josebetu? That's a name, dude. That's, <laughs> that's somebody's that's, name. That was the game. Remember that one time you were chipping out, like, hey, dude, your internet keeps on switching. Oh, like, yeah. What? Someone's on your internet. Arpana Hasabetu. <laughs> <laughs> Names. It's a fucking dope name. Yeah, say say that. Say that. Arpana Hasabetu. Har Arpana Hasabetu. Feels good, especially when you get to the Betu part. Arp Arpana Hasabetu. That's fucking dope. I like it. It's fucking sick. Yeah, that's a cool picture, too. It's all right. Anyways. Imagine there's a Christmas tree on top of Mount Everest. I guess I don't know. I don't know how to tie into this. But imagine if you're. Imagine you're the one who gets tasked with putting the angel on top of the Christmas tree on top of Mount Everest. You son of a bitch. You get all the way up there. And they're like, all right, and then this tree now. You would have an altitude record, I would imagine. <laughs> Dude, oh, and then I was like, I'm watching the K2. So I'm, so I'm watching all these things. I'm like mapping out my own routes if I were to ever climb Mount Everest. I'm like losing it. Dude, I'm like watching hours and hours and hours of footage of people climbing Mount Everest in K2 and Hinnapura and stuff like that, or or these North Face videos of them climbing the Lutzi face and skiing down. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking crazy. And again, there's nobody. It doesn't cure a disease. Nobody's getting. Nobody. I mean, there might be some fundraising for it in, in certain aspects. The Sherpas get paid like twelve dollars a day, and they're like just dying left and right. 
it, especially on Everest because it's overpopulated in the climb. But uh, I was I, I, oh but sorry, I'm about, so sorry. No, yeah, you're distracting me. But uh, the thing about K two, yeah, Joel had to call the Joel's on the phone with the cops earlier. Apparently, Joel's like Joel's talking about somebody flying backwards on. No, not backwards. Fucking coming into oncoming traffic on fucking Congress, going like fifty miles an hour. <laughs> Joel's on the phone. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Well, it was fucking cool. crazy. Yeah, and so uh, it was. It was it's, for something that we had not brought up since I walked in, Doug. It was fucking crazy. Joel, I've driven on I thirty five in oncoming traffic plenty of twice, times. and I was with you both times. That's right. This was on Congress, fucking. It's coming right at me. So Alistair Crowley tried to summit. He was on the first team to summit, or to to try to summit K two. Mm -hmm. Failed miserably. His whole team died. He's the only one that survived. I could have that wrong, but he, a lot of people died, and that's why it was like kind of the, he became like the wickedest man. But we were saying earlier, if anybody were to fucking fall on that mountain or fall in an avalanche. You have to leave them. Yeah, you're not getting them back. I will admit, and I do mean this, if you and I, if you and I were like trying to scale the Black Pyramid uh -huh. on K2. Right. We're smoking K2 trying to climb the pyramid? So we're going to get around that, and we're going to keep climbing. We're going to you know, do our whole thing, and we're going to go through the house chimney. Mm -hmm. Right by Hillary's house. And we get, no, this is, this, is a, this, is, this is pretty far away. And so it's not too far away. They're both in the Himalayas, so okay. I guess it's relatively close. I would maybe like driving to Dallas. Hot, get to the jump. Yeah, sure. Hey, I'm moving to the Himalayas, Doug. <laughs> I'll be over here. Uh, so uh, if we were descending, and like there's like there's uncontrollable avalanches there. That's why it's so dangerous. That's why, and like there's there's season after season after season of climbing season at K2. People just simply don't summit. People are pretty much guaranteed to summit at Everest every year, p potentially. Sure. But at K2, the weather is just so unruly. The avalanches are crazy. Chances are we're going to die. Or you're going to die. Right. Or you're going to die. No, no, no. You. And so, like, the thing is, because we're going to... I will eat a person. Do you know what... <laughs> that's, that's, I have zero qualms. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. You have... My all, athletic ability is trumping yours. You, you eat people when you get stranded, like, in a, in a journey to somewhere else. Then you eat people when you're hungry. No, you, you, you're not going to get caught on K2 or even ever for that matter and be like, bitch eating time. Joel Robertson's been, Doug Blank has been gone for <laughs> hours. Hours. <laughs> you know, don't know we're gone. I come back wearing your skin as a suit. And we're not, <laughs> like, yo, you were fucking gone for fucking three days. Well, actually, it's a lot longer than that. But, uh, but anyways, all I'm getting at is, Joel, is everything okay? Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to order food now if I don't get it. I'm done. I ordered it. I'm good. So, uh, if we're scaling down, the avalanche happens. I feel like I'd be more, more prepared than you. Okay. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that out of the line? I don't know if I would go on the fucking mountain if I was not prepared. But no, yeah, no, no, I would the sake more, of the story, would, I'm not prepared. Uh, the sake of the story, but mm, if we, I'm more athletically inclined than you. That is absolutely false. I may be fucking fat right now. No, you're feeling a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> But on the climb down from K2, if there's an avalanche, if there's a potential for one of us to survive, it's going to be me. It's going to be because I have the know-how and knowledge to survive. Sure. You? No. Nah. Not so much. No. Nah. You're going to be fucked. I'm going to eat the Sherpa. There's no Sherpas with us. just you and I. We made a mistake. Big time. <laughs> we did not think the Sherpa. Yeah. And, so, and so you're not going to eat a Sherpa. The Sherpa's going to definitely be more. I'm going to eat the Sherpa and take his jacket. Joel, I don't think you realize how offensive you're being right now. So I'm sorry. Do we have a large base of cannibals? What? Human meat is not for you. I'm talking about Sherpas. Oh, I'm, I, I, I would have said I would have ate whatever. Sherpa, Burpa. You know, that's like the last name. Sherpa. What like, do you mean? Like, it would be like Doug Sherpa, Joel Sherpa. What? Bill Sherpa. Yeah. Like, that's they all share a last name. Like, that, like that's their career and also what they go by. What's the appropriate, actual appropriate name for Eskimo? Inuit? Inuit, okay. Yeah. So I think, I could be wrong no, about that. No, that, that sounds right when you said it, because I wanted to say, I was going to say indigenous, but that's, that's. Well, the indigenous people. Right, no, I know. And but, then Australia has 
Aboriginals is what their big civil wars are so about? So Aboriginal is another, I think it's another like way to say indigenous. Like Aboriginal oh, okay. people of Australia, uh, they call the, the, the native the native people of Canada, call, they, they say Aboriginal. Okay. So I think in Hawaii? Samoans is a, yeah. Is so a, that's a that's a race. It's a yeah. I mean that's a that's a race of people. I don't know if they have like a broader like Pacific Islanders. Pacific maybe. Islanders, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, we're on K two, right? We're coming down big avalanche. It's like okay. And I mean this. I'm like fuck. I'm good. I got my my foot hurts when I was here. Help! Help! And I'm like Joel. You know, like, help me! <laughs> like, I'm down here! Like, dude, I'd look at all my stuff. Oh, wait, check our fucking thing. We're fine. Okay. I check my stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'd try to dig you out. And if I couldn't, I'd probably sit there with you and just die with you. Nah, don't do that. Bro. I probably would. Nah, don't do that. What else is there to live for? Oh, you got so much to live for. You were fucking on K2. <laughs> You're doing K2 with your buddies? Well, let me rephrase it then. I would wait for you to die. For sure. They and eat then... <laughs> I'm good with a I'm, I'm I'm feeling with a lentil. I have a feeling I could descend off of K2 in time where I wouldn't have to eat you. I got an idea. You're scaling K2 on K2, and as you come down, you are also coming down. I've never done that stuff or anything, and I highly doubt I ever will. So you, I don't know. You're pretty dumb to do it now. No, I'm saying like, but all I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, what? Why you make it sound? Is that the way they? I just K two. I just have. It's. I don't watch shit about climbing mountains. So when I hear K two, I just think about. K two is the second highest mountain and one of the most dangerous mountains to summit in on the planet. K two synthetic marijuana. That's very dangerous, and you shouldn't do spice. Maybe that's why it's got its name. Maybe. Oh, because you got to scale that mountain and then come back down. Possibly. So, anyways, enough about mountain climbing. I thought that was interesting. I mean, if no, you don't like it, Joel, I mean, you can kiss my fucking ass. It is interesting. I just don't like the part where you assume that you're the one who's going to come down. I would absolutely. I can run the 500 meter in 42 seconds. Okay. So, how long? 42? God damn, dude. That is, like, pretty fast, Joel. Fuck yeah. So, anyways, uh, I would absolutely ruin you on a, any hike. Any given day, you can have three years of training, Joel, and get in the most peak conditions you could. And I could just keep on doing what I'm right now, drinking chartreuse and freaking uh, beer at this table for three years straight, bed sores, and I would still murk you on any trail. You could hike this flat dick. <laughs> Uh, you oh shit! I remember we watched that Irish dude make that sandwich earlier. Are you going to the funeral? I shouldn't have brought this up on air. Excuse me. Are you going to the funeral though? What the fuck? The one where I buried these nuts in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to the barbecue? What? The one where I put these nuts on your grill. Are you serious? Why didn't you tell Dead me that? serious. Why wouldn't you tell me that? Dude. You just didn't feel like bringing that up? I did! I told you that! No, we've been talking about the other thing that happened. You haven't told me that once. <laughs> it's... Hold up. When? My grandma yeah, when? Died. When? You didn't fucking tell me! <laughs> yes, I did. In what? A text message? I, I could have swore I told You've you. You've not told me. We talked about the other thing. Uh, and, it, and our funeral is tomorrow. I had no fucking clue. Uh, and we have to watch it through Zoom because of fucking everything going on. I had no idea. You should lead with that next time. Well, you know now. Well, sounds better than the funeral I had planned. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. I honestly don't know if you're being serious I'm right now. Why would I lie about that? Why would you bring that up until we're on air? I, I, I thought I told no, you. No, if you told me that, I, I would have told you I was sorry. I would have talked to you about it. That's not like, are you kidding me? 
Um, so, my grandma died a couple of days ago, and very sad and upsetting. And um, Joel just made that. I mean, yeah, I guess he didn't know. But, uh, you know, I'm actually quite excited uh, for her in the sense of her moving on to the next realm and just um, continuing back into the ether and just, I don't know, whatever comes next. I think I truly believe there's something after this. And I am hoping that she's with all of her loved ones again or whatever, you know, whatever. And my parents, I mean, for my father's sake and stuff like that, like they believe in... Um, Christian stuff, and I and I hope that they find peace. My dad's doing pretty good, and um, yeah. So yeah, so power, uh, all love out to my family, and uh, sending good uh, vibes out for my grandmother and my grandparents. All of them, all my grandparents are gone now, and I will miss them dearly until my day comes. How about those jokes? Stand-up com comedy apparently is uh, making its debut in Austin uh, full force. Uncle Joe Rogan has uh, been proclaiming that this is going to be the next comedy capital of the world. And I honestly don't have an issue with that whatsoever. And honestly, a lot of comedians... Wait, were you serious? Me, dead serious. That's fucking crazy. It is crazy. Crazier than me thinking that your mom's birthday was yesterday. Yeah. I just don't understand how that didn't get brought up till right now. I told no, you. Dude, we haven't talked on the phone except for today, me asking where you were, and I have every text message that we shared. Are you apologizing to me? No. Then I didn't know. Then, then what does it matter? I just, I just can't believe you didn't tell Wait, me. you're not going to apologize? No. You're not going to say you're sorry? I don't know what I did for wrong. The mean joke you just said to me. I didn't fucking make a joke about that. This is bullshit. And I'm not apologizing. Well, say, hey, I'm sorry about your grandma passing. I am sorry about your grandma passing. Thanks, Obviously. Man. Thank you. I am sorry. It really sucks that what my dad's going through. Why are you doing this? <laughs> it's true. Just turn it off now, guys. This is it. <laughs> no, nah, it's pretty hurtful. I mean, it hurts. Is my mm. last grandma. Are we paused or something? This no. is fucking bullshit. <laughs> No, it's fine. You didn't know. You're not sorry. It's okay. I am sorry that your grandma passed. I am Thank not you. sorry that you didn't tell me, and so I made a joke about a fucking funeral. Joel, I could have sworn. <laughs> I could have sworn I told you. Oh, man. I don't know. It's been a crazy year, dude. And I was, saying, I was, just, telling the, I was just telling the customers I'm excited that they're uh, – I'm excited for my grandma to be in the next realm, and my parents are Christians, and my whole, my whole family is Christian, so they're like, I'm like, you know, I hope – that and my grandmother's Christian, and I hope I hope that the next realm is everything they want it to be. Cheers for that, you know, and for and, sure. And to my and to all my all my grandparents are gone now. And I'm just saying it's a it's a really it's really deep. A lot of crazy thoughts go through your head. Not like what's this life for and stuff, but it's like wow, man. It's like life is progressing. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you know, it's like we're all... Death and taxes. <clears throat> yeah. And so, like, and so it's just like um, one foot in front of the other, dude. Your body follows and then... What's the time stamp where we're at right and now? The next thing you know, one foot on the gra in the grave, the other on a banana pill. You know? Sweet. Right off this mortal, mortal coil. No, I got to use the restroom now, buddy. Okay, that's fine. Uh... Oh, we have tons of time. Oh, no, I know. We were at 30 minutes, like, five minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, damn it. I actually fucking... Am I two or one? Two. Uh, so while Doug goes to the bathroom... Oh, don't, don't make fun of my grandma. Oh. Why would you even say that? Look, there's a very good chance that he's telling the truth. And who am I to say he's not? But I didn't hear about this. And I feel like he would have told me. Also, though, I feel like it's pretty weird that he would say all that if it wasn't true. So it's probably true. Guy's life is confusing. So, uh, Doug wanted me to bring this up, and since he's gone, 
this is as good a time as any. Did anybody catch that awesome Newsmax retraction where they had to go on record and say that they uh, actually didn't have any proof of election fraud? Because that was pretty funny. I just, I don't know. <laughs> believe what you want to believe, for sure. I'm not knocking you for believing anything. But like I was telling Doug earlier, if you bump into one asshole in a day, then you saw an asshole. If you bump into 10 assholes in the day, then you're the asshole. So if everybody ends up being deep state in your conspiratorial worldview, maybe you're deep state. Know what I mean? I'm just saying, look, the argument that Fox News, Newsmax, Bill Barr, the, the, the idea that any of them could be some deep state liberal operative is laughable and honestly it's just plain fucking stupid so i got a lot of satisfaction and vindication out of watching that retraction and i'm sure a lot of people did too uh you talking about news work or news anchor yeah the news next thing but news. imagine uh so so trump was gonna okay things to talk about this week with that yeah, you don't spend a lot of time on it. Yeah, no, no, just real quick. Sydney Powell is that uh, crazy lady who slurred her way through the court hearing with Rudy Giuliani a couple weeks back. Blonde haired, middle aged yeah, woman. And she was like, uh, she's, she's fucking nuts. Okay. Was she like high on fucking Valium or something? Or? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Actually, that's a different person. Sydney Powell is the one who said she was going to release the Kraken and she had all this fucking proof of election fraud and this and that. And, yeah. I mean, she has, she has nothing. But, uh,. Trump, this week, it came out that Trump floated hiring her to a position in DOJ so that he could impose martial law to hold a second election. Hmm. Is that a... Guys, thing? that's called a coup. Yeah. A coup, de, coup d'etat. No, it's a coup. Coup d'etat. No, it's a coup. It's not coup d'etat. You it can't. is coup d'etat. It's not. Coup is short for coup d'etat. Yes, it is. You might be right. I am right. Yeah, 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 you're right. <laughs> uh, but still, what? I don't know because I, I, I used to hear, I used to hear the word coup d'état, but then coup is such like the, the way the, what everybody says. So you, just, yeah. Anyway, you're right. Uh, I'm sure, my grandma just died two days ago. What? Huh? I'm not sure about that though. I'm not How sure about that. That's a fucking fact. Oh shit! I muted myself. <laughs> I censored myself. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so listen, listen, listen. Okay, so Trump floated the idea. I want a picture. I want everybody to close their eyes and picture this. Okay. It's Trump, Rudy Giuliani, mm -hmm. all of their lackeys. Okay. So what do you think? Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, yeah, yeah, Bill see. Barr. They're all hanging out in this room, right? Mm -hmm. Trump goes, I'd like to give Sidney Powell a position. Okay. And I want to declare martial fucking law. <laughs> And do a second election, a straight mulligan, bro, a do-over. <laughs> okay. In my eyes, and keep my eyes closed. Just keep your fucking eyes closed. Okay. 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 Now I want you to imagine how fucking crazy what you just said would have to be that the next words in the room are Rudy Giuliani going, "Nah, I don't want any part of that." <laughs> Bill Barr going, "I quit." <laughs> uh, that's fucking insane. It's the, my pillow guy was tweeting the other day that seven states should impose martial law so that we can redo the election. The my pillow guy. Oh, my pillow, my pillow, and build up that kid that we had, that we had that one conversation about. I don't ever talk about that kid again. But oh, Rittenhouse. Um, is that the kid you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. great, a great rye, rye whiskey. Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. Dude, I was fucking listening to Uncle Joe Rogan again the other day. I was just telling you, I was listening to this episode, and they were talking about alcohol, and it was making me want to rip the steering wheel off of my car. Hey, that wouldn't have been the first time that had happened. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyways, guys, just, y'all are multimillionaires. Just read a book. Yeah. Jamie can tell you what it is. Just hold on tight. But that's the only thing I know about is alcohol. And what date my grandmother passed away on. But, uh... This fucking guy. I know a lot more than that. Just off the top of your head, those are the two things. Those are the got. two things. No, dude, it's like crazy. Did you watch a Mandalorian? Dude, I, I, have to, I have to watch a few more episodes, but I'm... I'm, I'm uh, 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 I get it. I was just gonna prop up Bill Burr. Bill Burr's tight. He's so fucking good. 
So, um, anyways, for uh, I was gonna tell you something. Oh, dude, I, was, I remember I texted you the other day. Do you remember that time I drove backwards on I thirty five? Oh no, no, that wasn't that time. When we're uh, the same, that car though. Yeah. That car. Um, it was the egg. We took. No, it. it wasn't the egg. It was the it was the Civic that I left at y'all's apartment complex. Oh right, 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 right. No. Mm -hmm. Was it the Civic? I wasn't picturing the egg there. Man, you remember when it finally disappeared? And I called you and I was like, it's gone! Yeah, it's like two years two later. Two years, dude. It was there a long time. So like, I had this car that was um, given to me. And I drove that thing into a cloud of smoke. Uh, Literally. And this thing was like w ripping. And we are like just uh, went to... Well, I don't even know why. It was we Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve. I needed to go to Walmart. And you needed to go to Best Buy to get some coffee maker for your dad. No, that's when I shit myself. And I was at Target. I only got one coffee maker. Okay, well, you. we were getting something for your dad at Best Buy. Why are we always together on Christmas Eve? You were giving me a ride to Quero. We were going to Christmas together. In that car? That was the plan. It didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, how do we get off? We rented a Mazda. That's right. <laughs> and you gave it to me. So for two weeks, I cruised around in our rented Mazda, picking people up and fucking... Telling people, oh, you like my new car? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Doug, you don't want this back? And you're like, nah, just just hold on to it. Turn it in. I was like, fuck yeah. Jeffy gave me the Mazda. I was that bitch everywhere. Oh, I didn't even have a license. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, the things That's that why you rented it, not me. We went so I could rent it. And then when we got there, I was like, oh, yeah, Doug, I don't have a license. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, just keep it. I mean, you need it Why did you do that? Because I lived on the east side and I could just walk everywhere and ride my bike. Yeah, that was so crazy because I was borrowing the girl I was dating. I was cat watching for, remember? So we had the cat carrier. We had to take it to Quero with us. So we had that cat in the back seat built on. Right? <laughs> Why did we go to Best Buy? To buy Christmas gifts. I know, but what, what in particular do we need? I don't. I needed the Empire Strikes Back steelbook from Walmart. Okay. And you needed something from Best Buy. So we're in Best Buy. I'll never get this. And I'm pulling out. And the, the reason we're in the car is because I... No. You know what it was? We weren't going to Best Buy. We got stuck. We went to Walmart and got stuck in that line of traffic yeah. funneling all the cars yes. through South Park Meadows. So yes. we ended up in the parking lot of Best Buy in a line of 50, 60 cars. And then everybody was trying, everybody was trying to turn left. There's one guy that was trying to turn left and he was holding up the line so far back. And you had, no, you had a cake. You had the fucking ice. You had a cake. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I had a cake. It was this big ass cake in his lap. Why did you have a cake? Because that was when I was only eating cake and <laughs> frosting right. and shit. When I went to that. That's right. Because when, when I first stopped doing everything. I walk over to. sugar cravings. Yeah, I walk over. I go to Joel's apartment one of those days. I open up the cabinet and it's just. <laughs> Blue frosting. Blue frosting. I used to eat like a whole can of that shit. <laughs> Bro, you get sugar, sugar cravings bad. I know. Yeah, bad. yeah. It's a thing. <laughs> Especially for, in, in, definitely in alcoholics, yeah. you know. So. <laughs> I, dude, I yes. used to go to Walmart and buy the pre-made birthday cake, kill it in one day. Dude, yes, I told you right. So you this fucking big ass fucking birthday cake in your lap, and uh, it was, and I'm like, this isn't good. And you're like, what? And I'm like, look at my thermostat in my car. It was all the way, all the way. And I'm like, oh, it was no, beyond no. all the way. It was like under as far as it could go. I'm like, no, 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 not now, not now, not now. And all of a sudden, it's just like, you can hear it just. Yep. You can hear the like, fucking wheels turning under oh, the hood. The, the so piston good. just tapping. I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, come on, come on, come on. We got. I'm like, Joel, Joel and Joel and I have had some pretty incredible experiences with in cars. In cars, <laughs> and I have always been the one driving. And this one is definitely towards the top of the list. And there's probably like how many cars? Ten cars in front of us? us. At least ten. At least ten. And like, and like triple that behind us. And there's one person just trying to take a left, so they have to go, you know, break through traffic, get in to get on to 35. And we just, I'm like, I'm like, just take a right. And I'm going, just take a right. You take a right, and you can go the back way. And it's like, no, no cars are going that way. I'm like, just take a right. And like, smoke is starting to come out from the hood. I'm like, no, 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 no. And then Joel just, Joel's like, oh fuck, oh fuck. And then all of a sudden, Joel just like takes the freaking cake. Throws it in the dash, opens the door of the car, and just gets out and just goes, Take a fucking ride! <laughs> <laughs> and all the cars are just like, <laughs> <laughs> I started a fucking movement. <laughs> and these people are going, bruh, 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 bruh. 
<laughs> you just hear people yelling out the car, yeah, turn right, turn right. <laughs> so that car is like, <laughs> and it just opens it up. And we're all just like, pew, pew, pew. That's, get, we got there so quickly. So fast the second that that was out of everybody's way. We still have to make it back to your place. Mm -hmm. And my car is smoking. It's going. There's those pistons just hitting. I'm like, oh my God. We get to 16, 1626. We get in the turnaround. I'll never forget this. You remember, I'm just like, you're like, Doug, you were getting so nervous. You're like, Doug, Doug. And I was like, hold on, motherfucker. We're getting home. And I'm just like, yeah. It's like burning this thing up. This like, is a fucking POS, by dude, the way. It's, it's a good like, car. It lasts a while, but it's a fucking. And we're flying down. And the reason that you're like, and the reason I was doing it is just to make sure we got there. Got there. Yeah, and yeah. If, if the car died we can't at least roll farther than where we were like that's all i was thinking it's like this car is never going to move another inch yeah this is the end of it it's the you end tried, you get you tried to give me the car remember you were like <laughs> you want that car it's in the top of the fuck my broke ass car so just like <laughs> dude and there's <laughs> didn't we coast from the gate to the parking spot we got into your apartment complex and the gate was open and we went through it just like <laughs> <There's just smoke. laughs> Just burling out of the car. And I was like, It's fucking Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's the day before Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. Because we, we got the car on Christmas Eve the next day. That's you right. ended up staying at my house that night. That's we got right. up early and took a taxi up there. That's right. That's right. Because the Uber didn't exist yet. Yeah. And so we just whip it into. And not, we had no money at that time either. Like, we're using no, we, we pooled 50 bucks together yeah. to rent the car. And then we just freaking. Uh, we just whip it in that parking spot, and I'm like, and we just like, you're like, Doug, I cannot believe, I, I can't believe we like, fucking made it back. And that car stayed there for two, two years. years. We were trying to sell it. Remember, we were just trying to sell it. Like, we we're just trying to sell it to get like some beer money or something. Remember, you had you put it on Craigslist for like one afternoon and then took it off. And that one dude kept on calling me, and I put, I finally had to put it in my phone as don't answer this because dude's like, you fucking crazy, you think you're gonna seven hundred dollars for that thing? I'm like, I mean, I'm like, dude, come on, it's worth that in parts. Yeah, you're fucking crazy if you think I'm gonna dip my price down because you're you're offended by it. But then finally we put it up for like two hundred dollars. You remember that? No. Yeah, we put it up for two hundred dollars because we're just like, let's get rid of this motherfucker. And it, and everybody that came, they're like, these, these kids came, they're gonna take it, and they're like, you have the title, right here. They're like, like what's wrong with it? I'm like, this motherfucker's far beyond driven. I'm like, you're gonna have to get this towed out of here. And they're like. Man, we just can't do that right now. And so ever since then, I was like, well, it's like, dude, and it just stayed there. Vehicles were fucking crazy for me, you, and Jeff from 2012 to 2015. Dude, the Beamer? I, fuck no. That's like only to like 2006. Yeah. He had the right. white Honda Civic after that. Oh, that's right. So his misadventures start with the white Honda Civic. That was in 2012 before I was back. By the time I get back, he's replaced it with the Jeep, and he... Oh, the Jeep. Right, so then, so he had his own car problems, but then I drove a red Montero Sport, and I'm coming home from your house, and I'm flying down the frontage road, and I, I get to the, <laughs> to Slaughter and, uh, and 35, and you take a left to go to my apartment, you go straight to go to South Park Meadows to go to Walmart. And uh, this is when I used to do a lot of late night shopping at Walmart. It's like 2 a.m. So I fucking... I get that wild hair at my ass. Let's go buy a DVD. So I fucking last second decide fly through the the light. You know, mm -hmm. it's full on green for me. Not even fucking close. It's been green since as I was coasting down the hill. Yeah. As I go through, bam, slam, T bone. Oh, that's right. And I fuck and I and they looked hurt, really. Like their car was fucked, and they were all like, you know, their airbags Bleeding? and shit. Now their airbags had busted and shit, and their like face was down in it. And I was like, fuck. So I jumped out of the car. And ran to their door, and I'm going, come on, get out of the fucking car. And they go, Arr! and run over my toes and fucking dip out. So I jump in the Montero that's totaled and hit 75 going down Slaughter to the Cedar Food Mart where we go. Oh, yeah. And that dude flies around the corner, and my car just goes, boom, <laughs> and stops moving. So I, co I turn into that parking lot, and I call the cop. And the cop's like, dude, what was your plan if you caught him? And I was like, I was going to fucking kill him. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Like just, I just want to exchange some insurance real quick. So I, I was straight like I was fucking tell him, dude. So then I, me and me and Jeff went. I, I'm only saying this because the Craigslist thing brought it up. Just to get to this point, Jeff and me decide, hey, let's get you a car for me. 
I'm like, cool, man, you helped me get a car? Thanks, dude. So he, he has like 100 bucks, and I have like 100 bucks, and he's like, we'll just get you a beat up fucking piece of shit car, and I'll we, fix it. Our friend that we're talking about has one of the most, one of the biggest hearts. Yeah, and he's also one of the most creative and good at fixing things people have yes. ever met. The motherfucker could fix anything, even and if he's never touched it before. And he's somebody that we both love dearly. He's our fucking brother. Yeah. Uh, but so he's like, he's like, I got 100 bucks, you got 100 bucks, we'll put it together, we'll find a, ba- a, a cheap piece of shit on Craigslist, I'll fix it up for you, you can have a car. So and he can, could. And he could, definitely. <laughs> but, we go into Craigslist, and this get, dude built a motorcycle from scratch. Yeah, fuck yeah, a badass one. Like more bad, than one. <laughs> badass and right. Like, how long have you been doing this? Like first one, and he's like the people that have been in the motorcycle game for years are like, you did yeah. this on your own. Yeah, yeah. shit yeah. was awesome. Just uh, knew it. So we get sidetracked, and he's like, hey, would would you get a scooter instead? And I'm like, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't ride motorcycles or whatever or anything. I just wouldn't be comfortable riding around Austin. I just moved back and <laughs> oh, it's scooter. And we live, we live out in fucking butt fuck nowhere part of Austin. Dude, fuck yes, yeah. I forgot about the scooter. And my goal was to be able to get basically to get to you, cause like me and you were doing our thing, and mm-hmm. I would always go down to East Tenth and shit. And so like that's really where I spent most of my time was with you were up, up south and uh, or down south. I was up, uh, you were down south. I was on the east yeah. side. So he, me and him, contact this dude. He gives, us his, he gives us his address, and we talk him down to 200 bucks. It's for this red Honda Elite. <laughs> dude. It's like 93 Honda Elite. It's so badass. It was cool. It was fucking awesome. And we, we drive to the address, and we call him, and uh, he's like, yeah, I'm outside. And we're looking around like, what the fuck, motherfucker? We're, we're for sure at your house right now. And he's going, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not here. Check, make sure you put the address in right. It ain't in Austin. It's in, like, some other fuck town. <laughs> And Jeff and me, are, we've spent so much of the day focused on it that I'm like, fuck it, let's go. So we cruise an hour and 15 minutes to this dude and get there, and it is the shadiest <laughs> fucking interaction. He fucking wheels this thing out. The, uh, the, the place where you put the key gone. is gone. <laughs> it's straight up just a uh, – it's like – I hard, mean, it's, it's there. Hard. It's there, but it's not – What's it called when you uh... – Hot wire. Hot, yes, yeah. It was hot wire, wasn't yeah, it? Well – Kind of. So what you had to do was take the front off of it, or you had to take some part off of it when you wanted to go, and fucking like pump it or something like that. And it was, I can't remember, but I got pretty good at it. And I cruised. Me and Jeff painted it black, and I cruised that motherfucker. It was awesome. Everywhere. <laughs> it would kick ass. It would have burned. Bro, I hit, I hit at least fifty in that motherfucker. Dude. That shit was crazy. Uh, me and Jeff. I totally just, forgot about that. Scooter. When we lived down south, we were just cruising around all the fucking in the cut back here and shit. But then uh. You, you got a car. I remember you got a car, and I didn't have a car at the time. And you and Jeff were like, take the scooter. I'm like, I'm not touching that motherfucker. Uh, the, so we fucking... What car did you get into that? The Saab. Oh, that's right. I bought the Saab. Mm-hmm. But so I, I was dating this girl at the time, and uh, she she would, like, not let me drive her car. But she would always be like, hey, you should go. Because I don't know if you remember this. We spent a lot of time swimming with that girl. She would always want to go swimming. And me and you spent, like... Literally, I spent like five hours a day there. Oh, yeah, and I was always belly flopping. It's when I got all tan, when I turned like straight up brown. Yeah. You remember that? Uh, so she used to take mushrooms and go swimming and then be like, I can't drive, but I need all these things. And I would hop on the scooter, fucking bang, <laughs> and uh, there's nowhere to hold anything. You know, you can put the fucking bags in the handlebars or whatever. So Jeff made it where you could take the front of the motorcycle right. off and put your scooter. scooter and put your bags in the front. <laughs> yeah. And it had this little key thing. And I don't know. I fucking loved that thing. And now it's gone. And I don't remember what we did with it. Oh, man. That was a cool freaking scooter, man. I it's like shit. Remember that video of Jeff? <laughs> uh, it was a vine. Oh, we have a good. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's gone now. But it's, it's just the street. And there's nothing there. And then you just see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the scooter. A good friend of Joel's uh, pal of mine. Uh, oh, the fireworks? No. Do you remember uh, our buddy Dub? Strapped it with fire. Oh, yeah. was doing donuts in the yeah. fucking cold de sac and they're going. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even that. The accident. Did we get hurt? Homeboy it, it comes walking up with a busted up. Oh, pin. shit. Who was that? I'll tell you off the air. Okay. Why? You know who it no, is. No, no, I'm going. I'm brain farting. Yeah, I remember it now, but I don't remember who that was. Oh, man, I can't, I can't say it. Just look at me and say it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, forgot about yeah. that. So our, our pal, I wasn't there for that. 
actually. So I just feel like it was because I heard it so many times. Anyways, smash a uh, good friend of Joel's pal of mine smashed it on a complete innocent, just an accident. He remember bust, he busted up his chin real bad. Yeah. Anyways, so I come down the next day. <laughs> that scooter held on tight though. The whole entire facade, all the all the plastic was just gone. Looked like freaking Johnny Five just, just cruising on good wrist, cruising around. Just, Oh, I remember so where he did brain. it too. He hit the fucking uh, the the little hot thing over by the fucking bridge. <laughs> it's just wires on like a just take like a regular scooter and just take everything off. It's just wires like one thing and like it looked insane. <laughs> <laughs> We're still flying around. I love that fucking thing, dude. We need to get the other one, dude. Uh, we had speaking of cars, so I, I I followed that up with the Saab, and I loved the Saab, but the window broke, and it was gonna cost. <laughs> damn near as much as I paid for the car to get everything in that stupid thing fixed. So I said, fuck the window and I'll just put a towel in the window or whatever. <laughs> but uh, Jeff was like, oh, we should put something on the hood, like a hood ornament. And I was like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so we got a, is it a jackalope skull or a fucking... I don't remember. It was like a horned animal or whatever. And we it was fucking, a deer skull. No, it wasn't. Had to have been. I don't think it was a deer. A jackalope skull. We never had those. It was something weird. It was something weird that Jeff had. And so I'm thinking... Oh, maybe Jeff made it or something. No, it was a real dead animal skull. I just don't it would know. Have, it would have been a deer. It might have been. But it had horns, not not antlers. Uh, maybe it was a... Um, maybe it was a... Um, maybe it was a... Um, a jackalope. A goat. Could have been. Either way. Yeah. So we zip tie it, the skull, to my to my fender. Or, yeah, it was my front fender. And uh, I'm cruising uh, back from Quero. <laughs> cruising from Quero to, to Austin. And I get in Gonzales and I get pulled over. And uh, dude's like, you know why I pulled you over? And I was like, it's because of the skull on my fender? And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he went around and he was like, nah, it wasn't the skull. And I went, shit, my registration? And he went, nah, but thanks for pointing that out. And uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's way more to that story that's not going to be told on I was told. <laughs> I, I started telling that story I and then realized, the shut day. the fuck I was told the other day. I'm like, I don't know where you're going with this, but I... Yeah, I was told uh, the other day that they're not pulling anybody over because of COVID. Because of COVID, not pulling over anybody over for your registration right now. Uh, I mean, it'd be fucking pointless to do that anyway, considering that the registration thing's going away in 2021. So it is. Yeah. Where's it going? Away. You're Where's not gonna. Ha- you don't have to get your shit registered, dude. Like, not. Who told you that? It's a. It's a fact. That We're shit's gonna, going away. We are going to fact check that. Yeah, I, have, I could be wrong, but that was I big news when they, that. when they announced Texas was getting rid of vehicle registration. Uh, I just pretty much just checked to re. So did we. We just got ours mine too. And I'm renewing mine. Let's see. 2021 so. is in a couple of days. Ending the inspection tax on passenger cars will have no effect on blah, 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 blah. Uh, inspection, at, inspection and registration go hand in hand now. You might be thinking of Texas that. Texas lawmakers resurrect bill to eliminate vehicle inspections in 2017. It passed in 2020, so it's going away. That's vehicle inspections. Yeah, but you would st- you still have to have your car inspected to get the registration. No, so. yeah, for I, sure. I, you, my bad, dude. I said it wrong. You'll still have the registration sticker. Yeah, you still have to get it registered. But you don't have to get so it inspected sure anymore. Re- I already did. I'm, I'm good for the 21. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is uh, pretty strange. Well, okay, so in... Okay, uh, in California, emissions tests are a big thing. You have to get an emissions test. Well, we, we have so there's a mis, there's a misconception about emissions test, emissions test in Texas. My Civic uh-huh. would never pass. You don't a, have to get one here, but it never passed inspection because they don't do emissions tests. But they're not gonna let you just drive out of there with like fucking holes in your muffler. No, sure, without sure. a catalytic converter and like it's a, yeah, it's it's a little bit deeper than that when it comes to other countries. States. States. Thank you. I'm like, what the, why can't I remember that? But it's word? So, it's nuts though because like this one. Look, I'm not an environmentalist. I I fucking don't want bad things to happen to the earth. But I don't fucking believe that normal human people just outside of the system of businesses have any fucking responsibility on their shoulders. It just that's not how it works. You know what I mean? Put the responsibility on the shoulders of people like Shell, Chevron, no, yeah, Exxon, things like that. It's but like, this is what you gave right, us. But that know? being and said, like, and now we and like now we're dependent to, on it. Yeah, you have to drive 15 miles to go to fucking work now. Yeah. It's like, dude, it's like... It's just the way it's, it's just the way of life. You can't just get a good job in your neighborhood. Right. It's, so, it's, it's nearly impossible. And the reason that you drive distance to go to work is because you got to fucking make money to afford a place to live. That's why the, you drive distance. You right. Know what I mean? so, so, so that being said, though, that being said, uh, I don't... 
That being said, I, that I'm not the said. kind of person who fucking eats clean or fucking. <laughs> not because I have anything against it. I just, for, for me, that's not how I'm gonna. That's not how I'm gonna fight the good fight. You know yeah. what I mean? But one crazy thing that always stuck with me that's pretty disturbing is in, in California, emissions tests are a huge fucking deal because yeah. it's polluted as fuck over no, there. No, yeah, for so, sure. L.A. County, one of the worst air purify, uh, one of the worst air purities in the world. Okay, dude, there is not a single fucking vehicle inspection place there that i've dude and I, through through being there and just being with people and, and and running errands with people and shit i've been to at least five nobody actually did the emissions test they just passed you oh yeah i'm sure and dude when you take that into account for Does, like the 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 that's for people i knew that were rich or well off who drove fancy cars what about 90% of that population of that city who drives beat up rinky dink dude. fucking bangers and doesn't have any money to get it fixed. Dude, LA is air purity is gross. So one time I went to LA to go see Joel. And Joel, I'm gonna say something about you, and this is old Joel. Joel likes to fib a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joel used to fib a little. I don't fib now. I got fuck all the lie about. Joel used to lie. A lot. And so no big deal. And I, but I saw, I always saw through it. I always knew you had a good heart. I always knew you were a good kid. And you're like, I just wanted to make, I just wanted to be. You would lie, not even to fit in. You would lie. Um, you wouldn't lie to fit in. You would lie. Uh, I mean, I, I can, I can feel it. Like you, I, when you would lie, you would do it because not to fit in, but you didn't want to let anybody down. It was a lot of that and a lot of fitting in. A lot of both. Well, yeah, maybe both. And it's like, but at the same time, it's like you were you were like one of the most loyal friends. I can't believe I'm fucking telling you this right now. But you're like one of the most loyal friends anybody could ever ask for. Ah, uh, thanks. Thank <laughs> you. And I, and I <laughs> thanks, Jolie. You're welcome. But I, but I, I, I think that's what, I've always knew that about you, and I think that's why I always let them slide. Anyways. Joel moved to L.A. I moved to Atlanta. You moved to L.A. I moved back to fucking Texas before you moved back to L.A. And you're like, hey, dude. I'm going to the LA School of uh, Recording. Uh, got the this professor and I became a good uh, one of my teachers and I became a good friend. My buddy Dan, he's doing amazing things on the hall, and and, and everybody around me. And he's like, "Come out of here, man! Like, come out to LA. We'll have a good time. I'll show you around." Uh, I got my, my buddy Serge. He like works at like the Palladium and stuff, and we can go check it out. And I'm like, "Too good to be true, right?" <laughs> oh, all right. And Joel's like, "I live in Hollywood, like right off a of vine or uh, what, what's that road?" Yeah, it was about Sunset. What was that called? I mean, I lived off Wilcox and Hollywood, which is like two Hollywood places. Boulevard, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. I lived on Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. So all this stuff, and I'm like, I mean, I, I mean, whatever. I mean, if he's lying to me, at least I'm going to LA. It was you. Would, I remember putting up cheers for careers, and you called me, and you're like, I've driven around listening to this all day. I'll come down if you record music for me like this. They, I it, don't remember having it that way. That's you. We've been talking about it because I, of that. Is what I'm saying. You knew oh, that I was yeah. making music yeah, for sure. Yeah. You just weren't sure if anything else I was saying was true. Well, and also we're best fucking friends. No, I know. I just meant as far as like wasting your money to come down there to record a record or whatever. Which, yeah. no, listen. <laughs> I, I didn't say. It. But anyways, Joel's telling me all these wonderful things, and I'm like, we'll see what happens. Whatever. And also, I want to go see you, and I want to go to LA. You yeah, totally. to to, and so, and my cousin, uh, my, my cousin Joe. Who wants us to do a podcast with him so fucking badly? I'm in. Yeah, me too. And so he has permission to always talk about him too. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Miss you, buddy. My cousin Joe is in. Uh, I have. I have. Weird burps. I was about to say you got heartburn or something, bro. No, I don't have heartburn, but like my burps. Man, there's so much to fucking talk about. But like, uh, so like, uh, anyways, I'll never forget. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go see Joel. Even if he's lying, it's gonna be great to be with him. He's saying all these great things. You know? I felt like I had gum in my mouth. So, uh, I'll never forget. It, you, I, I flew over there. I get to LAX. And I'm like so excited. I'm oh, like, I just realized what story you're telling. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one for the car stories. <laughs> and so like, I get there. And I... This is really the reason when you think about this. Because you're talking about the air pollution. I walked out. The moment I walked out of LAX onto the... Um, tarmac. <laughs> The platform, the runway. No, the fucking air, the arrival, yeah, the arrival place. Platform. Instant fucking headache. Yeah. Instant fucking headache. I'm like, oh fuck. And I didn't put two and two together. And I just looked down and coming down the arrival ramp to pick me up. 
Here comes Joel, and he's in the Explorer, and Joel's just going. And I'm like, and it's waving right back at you, and like, <laughs> all of a sudden I see you go. And you're like fucking flying. You're going like 30 miles an hour. He was like, <laughs> that sheer terror on it. I'm going, holy shit. And like, dude, I was like, and I, like, I started like backing up because you're just <laughs> flying. All of a sudden, the freaking uh, explorer like, just goes, he just like lifts up and slams right in front of me. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I have a fucking movie. And you're like, hey, hey. I'm like, oh my God, dude. I'm like, right, get in the car. You're like, oh, dude, it's so good to see you. We're like, so excited to see each other. Like, yeah. So my brakes just went out. <laughs> Like what the fuck? And so I'm like, it was oh. legitimately scary. <laughs> so I didn't like know what to think about it because I'm like, oh, okay. So I get in, and you're like, yeah, dude. Oh man, I'm so excited, bro. Dude, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm in LA. I can't believe. I'm like, yeah, man. It's like, and I'm like, so, and you're like, give me like, oh, Hollywood is like, you know, it's like way different out here than you expect. Hollywood is not part. Of, you're, like, you're, you know, just give me like yeah, the yeah. tourism spiel. And like we passed that big donut. You made me take you there. That's we took that we took that route specifically to not have to get on the 101. Yeah, yeah. And it, it I never ever went that way. And when you asked to see the big donut, I was like, now's the fucking time. Yeah. Dude. And, then, and then I'm like, holy shit! It's like some, it's like a montage out of a movie the way I remember it. Yeah. And the brakes were working. Kind of. I, no. no. <laughs> well, I you mean, had to put all your pressure on them. We a were good stopping. Fifteen feet before you needed. We to were stopping. Yeah. And so. Uh, Fifty. So, but I'll never get, like, we finally get to Hollywood and you're like, Capitol Records, like, all these fucking, like, do the Nickelodeon Studios or whatever, right? right? Klasky Suspa. Say it again? Klasky Suspa. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like all You were all excited because they had the All Real Monsters painted on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, and then, uh, and then Joel's just like, <laughs> you're like, not again. <laughs> like, ah! like, we go into your parking garage, just like, Kirk! You're like, Hey man, uh, we're not taking this car. <laughs> we don't have a car for your trip. Yeah, and we had the best time of our lives. But everything you said, every single thing you said, was fucking true. I, we did so much amazing things, so many amazing things, and you were you you did it. And yeah, I, yeah. I was I'll never forget. I was like so proud of you. I was like just like full. I'm like, like dude. Granted, we did a lot of drugs and stuff, and had sure, a good we had time. a good time though. Man, we were kids. I was twenty four. I was twenty one, dude. And like, it's just like, uh, damn, it was twelve years ago, dude. That's wild. And like, I, I'll never forget, dude. I think about that moment. I think about that trip, Joel. I don't know why I'm telling you all this right now. Maybe because like, it's subconsciously, I know you're, like, we're not gonna be able to be face to face very often. But like, every time I think about that trip, I just think, I'm like, he fucking did it. I did do it. It's I like, did. You know what I mean? It's like all the shit that he people gave him and all the times. Dude, people would fucking give you so much fucking hell. And they'd be like, you fucking liar. This. I'm like, dude. And I, would, and I would see it. I'm like, if he's lying, he's doing it because he's trying to make you feel better. Something. Yeah, something. You know, it, yeah. It was, it was no, there was no malicious intent whatsoever. And you never had that in you. You've always been. I think, granted, you can you can get fucking heated. Yeah, you can, yeah, you yeah. Can get You can get crazy, since you're <laughs> younger. But it's like, dude, you always had the fucking sweetest heart. And I think, and like, even when you, even when I didn't couldn't stand when we were when, we were, when I was 14, 15, and didn't want you anywhere around me, I still fucking liked you. Yeah, dude. You know? I love you, Thanks, dude. Thanks, man. I love you too. I do. I love you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, Doug. Sorry. I, let me respond to this text. No, you're fine. And then also I was going to say something along the lines of, uh, I'm kind of drawing a blank now that I did that weird love note to you that you didn't even appreciate. No, That's not a big deal. No, I, that means so I much to me, dude. And the crazy shit was that when you came out to LA, I had this weird feeling like, man, he's going to come out here and not fucking dig yeah. this the same way well, that I do. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I was, the, a big thing was like, and this is going to sound stupid, and I know anyone who's anything different to this is going to be like, That's so fucking dumb. But Smoking weed, especially out there, changed my fucking life. I did, it changed did I do my, weed out there? No, nah, but it changed everything about me, and it changed everything about how I lived, and everything about what I thought, and everything about how I acted, and I was, like, worried that you were going to show up and it wasn't going to work the same way for yeah, me since yeah. you didn't like shit like that, but it, it was the total opposite. We had the most fucking fun time, and we did so much 
crazy shit. We had fun, dude. When we went to the Palladium, and then I'm like, I'm like on the stage, me and you and uh, our home, your cash, home, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cash, like, bro. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't him. Were you? You were there when we ran out into the when we went to the haunted basement and Cash and, and Say ran out and uh, Say ran out of his shoes. Were you there for that? No, I went after that. And it was a, it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's, that was our group. Oh yeah, Him, okay. Say, K- Cash, me. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I remember going there, and you're like, "Try your best to go down." And you're like, "Go down if you." I'm like, "Dude, I could." I made like two steps. I'm like, "I can't." Bro, my homie ran out of his shoes trying to get out of there so fast. He came out barefoot. Dude, but... we were on the stage to play, and I was like, "Dude, freaking legends." Yeah, have been on the stage. Legends. And not only that. There's a that 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 is the scene of so many famous Los Angeles things, mob hits and fucking yeah. Dude, the basement was used as a mafia fucking. A lot of the buildings in LA were used in the yeah. old days. The basements were used for shady shit, man. And dude, uh, and we're like on that stage and like it's like yeah, dude. Like this is this is what we do when on a on a Friday a Friday night. There's nothing to do. We go hang out with homeboy and because he. And we, we got the run of the place. Yeah, we got to walk around and check it out and do things. And it, it's harmless. It's, it's it's good fun. We you know, saw a UFO that night. Do you remember that? Yeah, I yeah, do. I had a picture of it forever, and I lost it. And it still is the only time I've ever experienced anything like that. Dude, just an amazing experience. We're all together. Fucking Michael Jackson died when I was there. Yep. I, and he was like, it was like three exits down from where the studio that we were at with uh, Steve. Yeah, and yeah. fucking, we went and saw the idiots at the wrong Michael Jackson thing, leaving all their memorials and shit yeah. down there. And then we went down there, and that camera guy stripped me, and Joe was like trying to get in the, like, just like doing, and the camera guy goes, just stop. And I'm like, oh. Dude, living on that street, especially with Serge, was crazy because he had the best ideas and did not give a fuck about getting caught doing them. We put on suits and went to the Terminator 4 premiere and just stood on the red carpet and pretended to be press. He was just like, hey, you want to go down there? Let's take a walk. Wait, put a suit on. Let's go be press. That's awesome. Fucked up. He would always get staff That's shirts. He'd get staff shirts. You'd come to his house and he'd be like, all right, I got a shirt for you and a shirt for you. And when we get there, just walk past the door guy and say, I don't have time for this. I remember. Um, <laughs> that was his thing everywhere. No, I, don't, I, don't I don't have time, have time for, this. for this. Dude, and then like, yo, the palladium. The palladium. Dude, I remember going to see him. The palladium. I remember going to see him. Uh, it, me. Or just go to his apartment, yeah. and like, uh, there was a, um, uh, you know, like they put like do not disturb things, or like, or like somebody puts a six of flowers to your door. It's one of those, but it was from the city. It was like a permit to film, to film, yeah. And it's like pretty much letting everybody knows the neighborhood was going on, and it was just like, the blocks could be cut off, cars potentially may fall from the sky, and it was like a, a proper. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Danny Trejo drove by in a freaking uh, Land Rover one time. I'm like, what the hell? Like, it's straight up La La Land. Yeah, dude. Dude, like, dude, Danny, Fre- Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo rode by in the uh, in a convertible car during the Hollywood Christmas parade, and I went, Machete! He looked over and went, and I was like, yeah! Yeah! It's fucking losing it. Check the fucking thing. Uh. Yeah, man, that fucking city is crazy. I'd never live there again, but it was a fucking hoot. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> I was telling my robbery story last night. You know my robbery story? No, let me grab a beer for this one. Yeah, my fucking shooting story. Or what? You know, it's the only uh, serious situation I've ever been in, and it didn't ever feel like it. Okay, hold on one moment. I mean, I'm right here. If you want to start saying it, go No, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm just going to... I'm not even going to grab a mug for this one, Joel. Straight out of the can. Uh, so, uh, I originally lived in Hollywood, Holl- okay. I li- originally lived in Hollywood, and then I moved to North Hollywood, mm-hmm. and then I moved to Valencia, which is on the outskirts, it's like a suburb of LA, mm-hmm. and then I moved to downtown LA, where I was like, that was the goal, that I finally ended up there, and I had this awesome loft, and I was really excited and proud about it, and I worked at a weed shop, so- I, uh, I worked at a weed stop- shop, uh, that was like six blocks down from me. Okay. The thing to remember, the thing to know about downtown, especially at that time, was like gentrification was starting like super fucking hard in the downtown area. Okay. So like, the front of my building was extremely gentrified, the street in front, uh-huh. but the street behind had not even started to be gentrified yet. So sh- shop in front, lots of artisanal coffee spots, fucking craft beer places, shit like that. Backside of the the back of the street that went parallel to the backside of it. Lots of jewelry stores, pawn shops, check cashing places, okay? 
So I have to walk that back one to get to the weed store. I walked it 20 times, 20 times a day. I would walk up and down that street. Remind me, <clears throat> when, I, when weed was medically... Weed was medically legal the whole time I was there. Never, never yeah. recreational. So uh, I, I worked at this uh, weed shop called Medical Marijuana Messengers. Um, and you had to walk down Broadway. I, I lived at 5th and Spring or 5th and Broadway. Okay. And this place was at... Uh, ninth and Broadway. So I had whatever three or four blocks to walk down to get there. So I'm walking down there and a car, it's like maybe two in the afternoon. Okay. And a car flies down Broadway, my direct, facing me, and slams on the brakes in front of this jewelry store. And four dudes get out and run into the store. And I've got headphones in and I'm not really paying attention, but I see four dudes run into the store and a car just stopped in the middle of Broadway. And it's like, it's kind of weird. I get two feet and I hear gunshots. These motherfuckers ran into this. This is like 50 feet from me. It's across the street. So these dudes, they run into this jewelry store. They put a gun to the back of the security officer's head. The security guard doesn't even hesitate, pulls his gun out, and shoots the dude in front of him. Kills him? Kills him. Well, just wait. In front shoots of you? Him. In front of Dude, there's a bunch of people. So I'm standing. As soon as the first gunshot happens, everyone is it runs. Is a jewelry store? Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a you know, like. Why are you in a jewelry store? I'm not. I'm walking to the weed store, but this is the non-gentrified oh, street. So okay. all the stores lining Broadway were like check cashing places, okay. jewelry stores, okay. pawn shops. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, walks in, puts the gun to the back of the security guard's head. Security guard doesn't hesitate, shoots the dude in front of him. Every one of us is like, shit, I fucking get behind this UPS truck. There's a dude, <laughs> the fucking road is empty except for the getaway car. Here comes a dude on a fixie bike with his headphones on. Some fucking, you know, fucking white hipster dude. He screws down. And I'm going, come on! And he fucking, he goes going. And I'm, come on, man! And he fucking gets back there in the UPS truck. And there's this little old lady and she's praying on the, on the knee. She's praying. Holy shit. And uh, there's all these fucking gunshots. And two dudes run out and jump in the car. Okay? And it burns off in there. Bah, 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 shooting back out of their car like at the, at the store. I'm, and I'm in shock, right? Like me and this dude and this old lady are in shock just standing on the other side of the street. Then I hear, and I'm just like, you, you don't move. You're just such a, it's weird, like a trance-like state of just watching everything happen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear all this commotion, and they're pulling out the dude the security guard shot. And they put him on the sidewalk, and the owner of the store comes out and head stomps this dude like 20 fucking times. And people are filming it, and the other dude is like fucking bleeding on the ground and shit. And they fucking stomp this dude out, like right there on the street. And this other guy, this other guy is filming the whole thing on his cell phone. And I got, I got to go to work. I'm shaking. I'm just like, what the fuck? So I walk to the weed store. And I'm like, I can't be here today. I got to go home. Like I'm fucking shook up, bro. So I start walking back. And there's this, uh, there's this, uh, do you know what Femina is? No. Nah. It's like a, it's like a convenience store. Um, like a bodega? Yeah, yeah, like a bodega, but they're, they're like a chain of them, right? So there's one, oh, okay. there's one on the bottom floor of my apartment. So I go in the Femima to get a drink before I go up, and the dude that had been filming is there. And this is like maybe an hour later at this point. And uh, he's showing the cashier, like, uh, the video or yeah. whatever. And I'm like, dude, I was fucking there. How crazy was that shit? And he was like, bro, crazy. I just got $2,500 from three different news stations. To give him this video. Holy shit. And I was like, damn, that's fucking lucky. And he was like, nah, dude, I just wait for this stuff. He was like, I have a really good way of being in the right place at like, the right time. I haven't watched that movie. What's that movie? That Nightcrawler. But this was different. This was a dude just straight up selling the footage to these news outlets or whatever. And, dude, it was fucking crazy. And I brought that up last night because I was like, Caroline, we were talking about, like, crime and shit. And, like, how people on shows react to crimes the wrong way. They're never scared enough. Yeah. Like, they always cry. No, yeah. Yeah, and no, I was for kinda, sure. I was telling her, like, dude, if you're that close to people getting shot and you don't know what's going on, you do not think anything except for let's not get shot right now. I think, I think when, it, when, it, when it comes to shooting and stuff, yeah, it's like I would be pretty scared. But if I saw somebody get fucked with and there was, like, no guns and stuff involved, I would like to think that I would step in. Different, sure. though. That's different. No, I, yeah. I'm saying with gunshots and no, shit, yeah, you everything can't, changes. Yeah, your, your body would, I mean... It's really hard. That would be really hard to run into. That. I'm addicted to my phone. Put it this way. I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah. I pull that fucking thing out anytime anything is happening in my vicinity that I think might pop off. Anytime. I'm recording people all the time. Yeah. Nothing ever happens, right? But I try every time. Yeah. 
I didn't fucking think about my phone once when that shit was going on. Right. I was just going, how's this fucking happening? And that lady was fucking praying and me and this bike dude. And yeah, that shit was fucking crazy. Well, dude, that was good. <laughs> I guess I like a bad story. I, I, that was like one of the craziest no, moments of my intense. life. That's a great Christmas story. Oh, Holy yeah. Story. <laughs> That's insane. Well, I'm happy you made it out alive, but yeah, dude. But it, I just think because uh, I was just thinking about the other day, like the uh, that movie Heat. Yeah. Okay. So like that that shootout is uh, happened the same place. It did. It happened in downtown LA. But uh, but you know that really happened. That, yeah. That sh- that shootout scene is modeled on the actual fucking time that that bank in downtown got robbed by dudes with straight up fucking like military weaponry. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, the uh, sounds they use in heat are are you won't find a gun battle that sounds like that in any other movie. It's deafening because he didn't want it to sound at all Hollywoody, right? Yeah, bro, straight up. I mean, I've stood next to Jeff when he shoots the fifty cal inside the fucking uh, inside the range, and that's yeah. fucking loud. But something about like gunfire in a street echoes so fucking loud. It's like it is deafening. So I've always thought back to heat and been like, damn. That dude knew his shit about yeah, gun yeah. sounds because there was nothing tight about... Who, who directed that? Oliver... No, Michael Mann. Michael Mann. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say Oliver, Oliver Stone for some reason. Yeah, he'd probably do a good job with that shit, too. So, I was going to say a little Christmas story, but you don't have to. It's up to you, buddy. No, dude. Like, I'm burping a lot right now. Yeah, yeah. I told you that earlier. I went to... So, like, whenever I come up here and, like, for lunch sometimes, I, I stop in Lock Cart and just get, like, barbecue because barbecue is the Texas thing. It's pretty cheap. So, um, pretty long line, six feet apart. I don't know why I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> what are you guys going to say? I don't know. <laughs> Just the way you're like, hey, yeah, pretty long line. So I get in there, everybody's being patient. This is today, right? right? This is today. Yeah. So, uh, get in line. So, finally get there. I'm probably in there for like 30 minutes, you know. No big deal. Finally, my turn. Get your sides first. The reason I like to go to Black's because when you go to like Smitty's or anything, you get your meat, you pay for it, and then you have to go buy your sides. At Black's, they just do it, does it all in one place, sure, like a barbecue sure. station down in Quero. Well, when we had the barbecue station. Oh, does that not exist anymore? Uh, it 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 does, but it's not the same owners. Oh, it was always more of a. It wasn't the Jones. Anyway. It was. It's not the Jones. Really? Yeah. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. Just well, Smollett's, is, Smollett's I, is definitely no, still there. Don't get me wrong. There. Barbecue Station was good. I just always preferred Smollett's. Oh, Smollett's, Smollett's is definitely still there. But anyways, so like, um, all I'm getting at is it's like, you know, it's my turn waiting a long time, you know, and uh, I usually just go in there and just get like a third pound of meat, eat it, and just get the hell out. Just so I'm not two way down to like come finish everything. Yeah, here. yeah. Because always on a Tuesday when I seem to be doing that. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, hey, it's the holidays. I'm going to get, I love Love rice. I love rice. I like just wait, just rice. And I love mac and cheese. Yeah, fuck. I'm yeah. rice and mac and cheese today. I'm gonna get three quarter pounds of uh, brisket and whatever I don't eat. Bring home, right? Yeah. Waiting in the line. I'm like, I'm like, and she goes, "What would you like, sir?" They're, they're busy. They're shorthanded. You can hear them talking about this one. The one cashier's like. Who's that guy back there? Never seen him before. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then she's like, this guy's like, he needs how many pounds? Eight pounds? Missy, he is not allowed to have eight pounds, only four pounds. And the old gentleman's like, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, like just like a lot, it's like, there's a lot of yelling back and forth. So I'm like, I could tell that the, 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 the crew is tense. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I don't want service entry. I don't want any trouble. Yeah, totally. So I, um, so would you like? I'm like, I would like it to go by. I would like mac and cheese and rice and it's a go box. Like cafeteria. Yeah, like yeah. Boom, boom, boom. And, uh, and I'll have three pounds of brisket. No, no, pickles and, and, and onions. Okay. As well. Okay, they build it to you and they give you the box. Like, Thank you. But she locked the box up because I got a to go box. It wasn't on a plate. So I'm like, Dang. but I did, I did much quicker than that. I did, I did more, uh, I was more, I was, it was more mechanized than that. Sure, sure. It was like... Just moving, just moving. I said, mac and cheese, rice, rice. pickle and onions to go. Put it in the box. You took Boom. the box. Cut. Cut. Second I'm like, I don't want, I don't want I to cause any trouble. Yeah, I get it. So now you have to wait to get to the meat cutter. Okay. To ask for your meat. He's not a bad too. He's telling everybody Merry Christmas. And granted, I actually... No, nobody told me Merry Christmas. I was wearing a Junji Ito shirt. So I had this dude like being eaten alive. 
So I was like, You're like that guy's going to hell. So, so nobody told me Merry Christmas, and at the same time, I kind of appreciated it. But sure. they, didn't t- they didn't tell me Happy Holiday either. So I was like, man, I guess I can get why people get upset about yeah. not being told that. You felt left out. Felt left out. Yeah. That's not what this is about. No. So, anyways, I go and I get um, to the meat cutter. Good old boy. Good one. You can tell he just wakes up every morning. I think brushes his teeth. Puts. He had his mask on. Yes. Good for him. Everybody did. Everybody did. Good. That's good. There was because I stopped in Lockhart on my way back from fucking Thanksgiving. I stopped in Lockhart on my way back from Thanksgiving. And the dude in the gas station went, "Hey, bro, you know you don't gotta wear that in here, right?" All right. I don't, Gonzalez, I don't even stop in Gonzalez anymore. You got, you got me fucked up if you think I'm going anywhere near a Bucky's. Uh, right Quero, unless I'm going to like my property or like going to like check on my parents from like a distance, like. I Is it know. bad there? Because see, my folks are telling me that everybody they see is wearing them. I guess it's we're getting sidetracked. Get back to your story. Anyways, I mean, uh, from I mean, the people that you would like to be, the people that you respect, we respect, do. The people that you know that would wouldn't wear, the people that you imagine wouldn't wear a mask. You put the face to the names and all that stuff, Joel. I'll tell you something funny when we get off. Okay. Here. <laughs> so, anyways, where am I? You're at the meat guy. Good old boy. Good old boy. Like, man, you look like somebody I'd grow up with, you know. Looks at me. And I go, three quarter pound fatty. Puts on, told everybody around me, happy, merry, good stuff. It's like, no, it's crazy. I'm like, dude, I just made your life so fucking easy. No big deal. Go to, go to, I'm like, just drinking in some, in the, and that's it. And I get everything. But there's something I'm leaving out. I opened that box to let the meat get put in there. And remember, just so the reason I told you they didn't tell me happy holidays or merry Christmas the reason that I'm telling you that they gave me the attitude is because of this. I opened the box. Remember, I asked for mac and cheese and rice. Yeah. And she closed the 2 box and gave it to me. Thank you, ma'am. Moved on. Open it up. Mac and cheese is there. Pickle and onions there. Guess what else is there? Not rice. Not rice. Ice. Beans. <laughs> Beans. And if there's something that anybody should know about me. I hate beans. Bean hater. I I'll eat beans. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Like it's not like, it's not, but you're you, not going out of your way to add beans to a meal. And if you have the choice, you take beans out not. of a meal. Yeah. 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 And so like, uh, but in I just looked at it and I'm like, you know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hmm. it's okay. Thinking about you, I think about you. I thought about my friends. Thought about my girlfriend and, and stuff like, and she's like, cause she loves beans. My girlfriend loves I, I beans. I also like beans. And you like beans I'm too. Bean guy. Love beans. I just don't like them. I don't want them on my fucking, on my plate. Not a bean eater. Unless, unless, unless it's like something like, uh, like a, this dish needs to have beans. Of course. Like, you know what I mean? But it's like, if it's like getting barbecue, if it's like queer, a uh, Texas style barbecue, you get whatever you want. That's what you yeah, 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 totally. You know what I mean, if it was, if I went to like a composed restaurant where they like build an addition, it's like it needs to have navy beans or white beans or anything. I, mean, I love green beans, but anyways, I like the snap peas, like peas. I like the pea family. Yeah. But anyways, legumes. I'm getting somewhere. So they gave me the beans. I'm like, pissed, but I keep it in. Yeah. You know, I pay for it, and I'm like. And I said to myself, who knows? Eat the beans. Maybe today will be the day that I had the bean. That changed your life. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the holiday spirit, the Christmas spirit that I've been embracing this year floods right my heart. Right in this one little bean. In that bean. So I go and sit down, take a big old bite of beans. Hated every second of it. And can't stop burping. And I fucking can't stop fucking burping. <laughs> and it destroyed me. And not only that, the brisket they gave me was pretty bad. And I was like, and so I'm like, dude, this was like the worst. And I th- all that to go, I was like, I'm going to bring it to go and have it for tomorrow and stuff. Chunked it. All in the trash. I mean, well, I ate as much as I could. I wasn't going to just throw out. I mean, you know. I, I'm but, with you on that, though, that when you get a brisket that's not the brisket you were looking forward to. You don't you don't eat leftovers because all you think when it's you like, eat it up this. is like is I don't want this brisket and I just and I'm and I you know I could have just simply just been like you know what 
I, I don't care how. I mean, I could, I'm sorry you're busy. I could have been polite and like, but. But I need that fucking rice. I need that rice. And I don't need beans. But you didn't. You did the Christian the, thing. The Christian thing. I did the. Where you force yourself to well, do something you don't want to do. Step at the time, bud. The holiday thing. I'm mean, like I said, this is a. All right. So this is a. You have anything to say? No. All right. I'm going to sign. I kind of have to pee. Can you tell. Well, I pee? Sure, Joel. I don't want. I don't want to just dip, but I gotta pee. I was gonna hold it. Hold out. I'll hold out. <laughs> I'll hold. Let out. me I feel like we're out. pretty close to the end. No, yeah. I, we're we're there. Okay. Then I'll hold out. We're good. Go pee. No, no, no. I'll hold out. You're fine. Go pee. Okay. All right. So I'll wait for Joel to come out and do a sign off. I do want to say this to you though. I hope that everybody. Here to the customer. Yep. I'm hoping everybody has a really great. Uh, holiday. I hope everybody gets along really well. I hope the fa- your families are all healthy and together. Um, all seriousness, my grandmother. Uh, I, I everything I was saying earlier. Joel thinks I'm kidding, but like uh, to all love to my family. And I know that was, we're being silly about it and stuff. But sometimes it's just what you need. And I actually didn't expect that to happen. So I actually do feel bad for. Maybe I probably didn't tell Joel. So I actually do feel kind of bad for him for. That whole thing, but that was honestly. What else can you ask for? And then, uh, but I do want to say a few things for when Joel gets back. But you know, he's probably, probably it shouldn't be that long. He's gonna have to wash his hands, and probably only take like ten seconds. Oh, I went in there, and the water was on cold the entire time when I went in there, and um. Twenty seconds. I said this like image of him just like <whistles> twirling his thumbs, just waiting for the time to pass. What I have to say is not that intense. So if you're like tired of listening to me, wait for Joel. I understand. So Joel's back. Let me touch your hand. Let me touch your hand. Bitch, I counted. I mean, I counted too. And so, what I mean, did you get? I want to know. On the count of three. One, two, three, 20. 26. I think I count faster than you. No, you were in there for 20 seconds. I gave you 20 seconds. I gave a 20 second limit after the. Okay. I'm talking about from the second I turned the water on and put my hands under it, and I started counting, and I got to 26. Did you know if you overwash your hands, it's even worse for the virus? Uh, I don't know about that, but I know I overwashing did. my hands has absolutely fucked Bro, the other my day, hands. My hands have been fucked up, dude. Like, seriously. No, uh, but you need to wash your hands with. Warm water. I'm just saying. Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, is there a real medical reason behind that? Because I wash my hands in warm water because it feels good. <laughs> okay. I don't. What, are you not supposed to wash your hands in warm water? Wash your hands in warm water. I'm. Just, yeah, I'm saying. Is there a medical? Is there actually? No, med- I went in there, and the evidence, the 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 evidence showed that you wash your hands in cold water. I mean, I just turned your sink on. It's just running? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I just want to say, everybody have a great... I kind of started it, but everybody have a... I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Everybody, uh, please be safe. I understand that everybody wants to be with their families, and people are going to be in groups and parties. It's just the way it's going to be. Um, please keep other people that are enjoying their families and respecting a distance in mind. And so, you know, try your, please, please, please try to be as safe, please, as be as safe as possible for everyone, for, for, for humanity. It'd be good for people who, for people to try to keep in mind, you didn't earn Christmas vacation this year. Yeah. And if you're deciding to still take it, it, the impetus is on you to do the responsible thing. We didn't earn Christmas vacation. We didn't even earn fucking summer vacation. Well, and sure. And so all I'm saying is you're going to see your family and stuff, but just remember there's a lot of families out there that are just going to, that are doing things by the book. If everybody can at least just keep that in mind, wear your mask, be around people that you know are 
I don't even know how to say it. Just be fucking careful. Yeah, just and be have careful. a little personal responsibility. And don't put other people at risk just so you can have a good fucking Christmas. Yeah, and it's so, not fair. Yeah, and so it's just like keep that in mind. Just uh, be kind to each other. And always, dude, when you go down to a small town and you see somebody that's not wearing a mask just because they just feel like it's against their rights and stuff like that, that's not the holiday spirit. The holiday spirit right now is just to be all of us being this together and wish the best for each other. And that's why I truly feel like I'm coming from when I'm saying this. It's like we're all in this together. Don't forget it. Uh, 2021 is right around the corner, and we have one more episode before then, right? Two. Two. So, and we're going to talk more about that, but... Oh, oh, until 2021. Yeah, we have one more episode until 2021. Yeah, and so all I'm saying is... Uh, just be safe. Just take be care safe. of each other. Yeah, take care of each other. Joel, take care of yourself. I love you, buddy. I love you, too. And have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. And tell your family that I say that as well. And, and tell Merry your family that I say that as well. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy, happy Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Happy Boxing Day. And same to all you. Boxing Day! Thanks for another episode, guys. Be sure to check us out on Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube Music now? YouTube Music and uh, YouTube. iTunes. Oh, yeah, YouTube. Uh, you can also just send me a check. I'll send you all recordings. Woo! All right, everybody, have a great Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Happy holidays. Joel, oh, dick. <laughs>